The Ministry of ICT and Innovation is set to launch an annual tech innovation challenge dubbed Hunger Pitch Fest, which will see the best innovation startup walk away with a cash price of 100,000 USD, among other benefits. Now, the initiative is as a result of the collaboration between the Ministry and Rwanda Development Board aiming at supporting the growth of Rwandan tech ecosystem. Earlier today, my colleague Ethan Tashobia spoke to ICT and Innovation Minister Paola Ingabire about the initiative and what it meant for the local tech entrepreneurs. Hunger Pitch Fest has really been designed um, you know, around uh, identifying uh, the talent that we have across Rwanda of innovators that are at startup stage. Uh, we have avoided to go at ideation phase and we will be doing many of these competitions in the future targeting the different levels uh, of uh, growth for the startups from ideation. But this time around we are starting with startups that already have a prototype, something that is ready to go to the market and really designing it around uh, thinking through what are some of those support uh, mechanisms that they need to be given so that they can bring their products to the market but also scale uh, them further. So we've launched the hungerpitchfest.rw uh, platform through which many of the innovators have started uh, putting in their proposals. We've put together a team of judges uh, that will start evaluating the different proposals that have come through and once the evaluation is done, we are doing what we are calling uh, Hunger on the Road, which is really going around the country, and we've chosen three locations, Huye, Musanze, and Kigali. And so those that will have been pre-selected uh, for, uh, for this competition will then be able to pitch their ideas and solutions to a team of judges from which would like to select, to select the best uh, 25 countrywide. Once the 25 are selected, we want to take them through a two-week boot camp where we've mobilized many of the um, you know, uh, support organization, entrepreneurship support organizations in Rwanda that are bringing in uh, you know, their expertise and capabilities on how do you support uh, them, uh, train them, look at their business plans, uh, you know, and, and really make sure that they have uh, products that are fit uh, to come to the market. Um, why now? Uh, what makes this one quite uh, different? We've seen uh, a number of uh, competitions and hackathons and all that. Uh, this sounds a bit unique, isn't it? Well, I think this comes in to complement the different competitions that have been happening. And for a country where we are aspiring to be an innovation hub, ideally what you want to have is multiple competitions, hackathons happening, you know, every corner of the country. And so as government, we also don't want to be left behind and only you know, focus on policies that will help promote uh, entrepreneurs and innovators. But it's also putting some skin in the game and saying, what is it that we can do uh, to help build the pipeline? Uh, as we discussed with many of the, you know, especially those private sector organizations that are running the hackathons and, and trying to you know, identify talent and groom talent along the way, the biggest challenge has always been around uh, pipeline. And so we feel that is a space uh, where, as government, we can come in and also lend in our support and create that pipeline. And that's why I earlier mentioned we will also be looking at uh, the idea level, which really you go out and look for innovators, young people with very interesting ideas, and then groom them through the process until they are startups and obviously uh, they can grow uh, to the next uh, growth uh, stages. And so uh, why now? I think it's very important. COVID has been a good... Um, eye-opening experience for us. We saw so many uh, innovators and entrepreneurs raising to the task and saying, we have the ideas we, you know, uh, on how we can really respond and support the response to the COVID-19 uh, uh, interventions. We've seen some that have been able to, uh, you know, build uh, face shields. They've been able to develop face shields through 3D printed uh, face shields. Some of them have built platforms that are helping with disseminating the right information. And so we thought it's a good opportunity, uh, you know, building on some of these results, but also the excitement that we are seeing around these innovators to say, let's support them, let's create many of these. Obviously, we wanted to see many competitions happening. It's not just Hunger Pitch Fest. We would like to see tens or hundreds of them happening every year. And that is what is really going to, um, you know, promote the innovation and entrepreneurship culture in the economy. Um, you know, I saw the package for the winners, if that's right. Uh, 100,000 US dollars. Yes. That's quite an exciting package uh, for the winners. How did you come up with this uh, package? And uh, um, 
won't it be too much and, you know, overwhelm you and um, the authorities that you may hold it uh, for once and will not get to see it in, a, in future? We actually need more than just 100,000. I think uh, 100,000 was a good starting point and obviously over, over the next few weeks we will be um, revealing some of our sponsors and, and, and showcasing what they're doing. But we, we need more than just 100,000 and, and so this is really just a starting point. Ideally for a tech startup, they will need between 50,000 to as far as you know 500,000. And so if we're starting with 100,000, I think it's still low, but it's still a good starting point. And, and for us, what we want to see is to look at the appetite uh, out there for, for these kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, ticket sizes of money that we are giving. And because 100,000 is not too, much, too large uh, a pool of funds, but it's good enough to start with, that's why we felt we can't stretch it through many uh, innovators or companies because then it won't be helpful in helping them scale and go to the market. And that's why it's, we're limiting the 100,000 to the best five companies, the top uh, company going away with half of it, which is 50,000, yeah. and the other four will go away with around 12,500. But it's beyond also the money. So when, when we're talking about innovation and entrepreneurship, obviously the biggest challenge for many of our innovators and entrepreneurs is access to capital. But beyond that, it's really thinking about creating a mentorship network around them to help them uh, you know, fine tune their products and bring them to the market. Uh, it's, it's really creating that network for them and, and thinking through the policies, the regulations, unlocking data for them because that is critical. Many of them, as they build platforms, they are relying on data um, to have um, you know, better outcomes. And so uh, the idea is that much as the five are going to be getting the prize money, the 25 will all get the same support that is going to be awarded to them. Brilliant. But to your point, we also don't want to just come in and give money and walk away, but rather to walk the journey. So even for someone who's going to receive the 50,000, they will not just go away with the check and go away but we really want to uh, create a one-year program where we handhold them through the process, obviously with, with a, a group of mentors and, and other businesses that are in, uh, are in similar sectors, and they're able to gradually grow, but also use that money in a way that they create impact over time. So how frequently are you working uh, on this project, uh, Hunger Pitch First? just as the ministry or you have other partners uh, briefly? We have so many other partners on board. Uh, this idea, we are, we, we are doing this together with the Rwanda Development Board. The Rwanda Development Board ho hosts the Kigali Innovation City. And so the innovation mandate is one that we um, uh, across the board have been um, you know, supporting together. But beyond us as government, we also have all these uh, ESOs, the entrepreneurship support organizations that have really come on board. Um, I, I know you know of a 250 startup that has already been getting most of the startups from ideation level and scaling them to a startup level. Uh, you have just Siri, you have Noshkin, there's, there's many of them that have come that, that are really supporting this initiative. So how often we want this to be an annual event. Uh, but again, like I said, it's, it doesn't have to be the only event. We want it to be an annual event, but we want it to be an anchor for multiple other events that all these ESOs will be uh, you know, running throughout the year. Yeah. So that there's a bit of uh, um, you know, a process from the time you have an idea as you scale through from incubation to acceleration. So it's really creating that uh, value chain and making sure entrepreneurs and innovators understand what kind of support is out there for them and using this platform to showcase that.